this video we're talking about fractional exponents and the most important thing to remember about fractional exponents is this formula here that tells you that the square root of x or anything for that matter is equal to x to the one half. So in other words whenever you're taking the square root of something this square root symbol here becomes this one half fraction here and the x stays the same. So taking the square root of x is the same thing as raising x to the one half power. Keep in mind here that this x inside the square root is really x to the first power. We have this understood x to the one. So this is x to the first power. Well, sometimes the exponent inside the square root is going to be something other than one. For example, if you had x squared inside the square root, whatever that exponent is, that's going to become the numerator. Notice here we have one here and we have one here. So this one x to the first, this becomes the numerator of the fractional exponent. So notice over here in this other formula, we have x to the a inside of our square root. And this a here becomes the numerator of our fractional exponent. The base here of two, this comes from the fact that we're taking the square root. If we're taking the third root, then this denominator is gonna be three. If we're taking the fourth root, then the denominator is gonna be four. When we're just taking the square root, the denominator is two. And that's the only time when we don't have some number right here. If we're taking anything other than the square root, we're going to have a number right here, and that's going to become the denominator of our fractional exponent, and that's the root that we're taking. A here is always going to be the power on the base, and B, the denominator, is going to be the root. So let's look at a couple of examples that'll make this more clear. So we have here 2 to the 1 fourth power. We know that 1 is the power and that 4 is the root. So what we're going to do is write our square root here and we take the numerator and we make that the power on the base. So this is going to be 2 to the first. We're going to take 2 to the first and put it inside of our square root. The 4 comes out here and becomes the fourth root of 2 to the first. Of course writing anything to the first power is redundant so we'll just go ahead and say the fourth root of 2. If we look at another example here where we have four to the negative one half power, well remember that when we have a negative exponent, we can make it a positive exponent by moving the whole thing, including the base, to the denominator. This is really four to the negative one half over one. So if we pull a four to the negative one half out of the numerator, then we're just left with one in our numerator and we get one times four to the positive one half or just four to the positive one half in our denominator. Now we're going to deal with the 4 to the 1 half in the denominator. Remember that anything raised to the 1 half power is the same as taking the square root because basically we're saying take the second root or the square root of 4 to the first. So we could write this as 1 over the square root of 4 to the first or if we simplify 1 over the square root of 4. Of course we know that the square root of 4 is 2 so this just becomes 1 half. Here we have negative 27 to the negative 1 third. Remember order of operations tells us that we have to deal with this 27 to the negative 1 third before we apply this opposite sign out in front. So leaving the negative sign out in front, 27 to the negative 1 third is going to become 1 over 27 to the positive 1 third. We just move the whole thing to the denominator in order to make the exponent positive. Now we're saying that this is negative 1 over the root of 27 to the first and it's going to be the third root. We take the numerator and make it the power on 27. We take the denominator and make it the root. So the third root of 27 to the first, which of course is going to be negative 1 over the third root of 27. It's redundant to write 27 to the first. Now what's the third root of 27? Well the third root of 27 is whatever number we can multiply by itself three times in order to get 27. Of course, that's going to be 3 because 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. Remember, 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 again is 27. So the third root of 27 is 3, so this becomes negative 1 over 3. Now, if we look at our last example, again, we'll ignore the negative sign out in front. We'll deal with the 8 to the negative 2 thirds. We'll make it 8 to the positive 2 thirds by moving it from the numerator to the denominator, and this will become negative 1 over 8 to the positive 2 thirds. Now, remember that the numerator becomes the power and the exponent becomes the root, so this is negative 1 over the third root of 8 squared. Remember that when we have some root of two numbers that are multiplied together inside of a square root, we can split them into separate square roots. So since this is really 8 times 8 in our square root sign, we can make this negative 1 over the third root of 8 
times the third root of eight. We can put them into separate roots. We just have to take the third root of each one because we are taking the third root of both of them here. So now what do we have to multiply by itself three times in order to get eight? Well, that's two because two times two times two is gonna be equal to eight. So the third root of eight is two, which means here that we get negative one over two times two because we get two for this one and two for this one. Of course, two times two is four, so we get negative one over four.